In this video, I'll show you how to shoot a triptych image with your camera and then join it together in Photoshop. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Now, today I've come down to the beach because I want to shoot a triptych. What's a triptych? Well, it's three photos that have a connecting theme. And today my connecting theme is going to be the letter S. S for sky, S for sea, and S for sand. So I need to take three different shots and then we'll use Photoshop to combine them together and I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, well, let's start with the first S for sky because there is a blue sky over there. So that's going to be my first shot. It's going to be the top of my triptych and it's going to be the easiest to photograph. Okay, so I'm using my Canon 600D and a 28 to 135 millimeter zoom lens. All I'm really going to do is shoot in aperture priority mode. I'm going to choose a middle of the road aperture, f8, because the aperture when I'm shooting the sky really doesn't matter. I'm on ISO 100. Let's take a shot. Right, that's the easy one done. Now it gets a little bit harder because next S is going to be C. And I have some C over here, so let's do that right now. Okay, so here I am right at the edge of the C and I want to get my C shot. Now to do that, I want to make sure I freeze the, the waves in action. So I'm going to switch from aperture priority to shutter priority because that's all about shutter speed and freezing motion or blurring motion. In this case, I want to choose a nice fast shutter speed. I'm going to put it up to a thousandth of a second. I'll need to pop my ISO up to 400 to make sure that I can actually shoot at those speeds and I'll take a shot. Now the chances are the first wave I get won't be perfect, so we might as well shoot two or three. There we go. So as you can see, at a thousandth of a second, that's fast enough to freeze the action and make every little drop hidden sharp. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's two of my three things done. We've done the sky, we've done the sea. That just leaves one more S, which is S for sand. And that's all around me, but I'm not just gonna photograph any bit of sand. I'm just gonna try and find something that is a little bit interesting because it's gonna make the bottom part of my triptych and I want it to look quite special. Okay, so the third and final part of my triptych is going to be S for sand. And there's lots of sand, but before I photograph it, I just need to set my camera up correctly. So we were in aperture priority mode for the sky, then we switched to shutter priority for the sea. I'm going back to aperture priority for the sand because I want to make sure I get my depth of field correct. And even though I'm going to be shooting pretty much straight down, I'm going to choose F8 because I'll be photographing quite close to the sand. And the closer you go, the shallower the depth of field becomes at any given aperture. One more thing I'm going to do is to dial in a bit of exposure compensation. Now you can find out a lot more about how exposure compensation works by checking out the Adorama learning site where there's plenty of information on exposure compensation. But for now, all I'm going to do is dial in an extra one stop of exposure compensation because when you're photographing white or light colored sand, it can really underexpose your pictures. Okay, so that's the technicalities set. The camera's ready to go. Let's find some interesting bits of sand. Now, there's lots of sand here, and there's also bits of stone as well. And where the, the tide has come back over the stones, it's created some very nice patterns. So all I need to do is just find two or three little patterns and photograph them and see which one will work best when I get back into the computer. So let's go find some patterns here. And you can see I'm working very, very close. Let's come all the way over here. This looks good. So we've got three there. Now that looks quite good. I like odd numbers, so three might work. Let's see what else we can find. Or maybe just one on its own, actually. That's kind of, kind of nice, like that. Okay, and we'll just try one more, and I think we'll go with a, a wider shot this time. There we go. That gives me a nice little three. Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, very pleased with that. So there we go. That is my three pictures taken. Sky, sea, sand. Let's put these together into a triptych using Photoshop, and that's what we're going to do right now. 
So inside of Photoshop CS6, I've already sorted through my images and processed them, and these are the three pictures I'm going to use to make my triptych. Now, first thing I want to do is crop my image, because I don't need the whole picture. I'm actually going to go for a small letterbox. So let me get the crop tool. Because I'm using Photoshop CS6, I need to come up to the top here and click in Delete Cropped Pixels. That's kind of important and can't really be missed out. So now I'm just going to spin these around a little bit like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. So I've cropped this down, and I need to repeat that exact crop on the other two photos. But here's a really nice trick. I'm just going to click inside the image to bring up the rule of thirds grid. And then I'm going to right click on the image and choose Use Front Image Size and Resolution. Now that will analyze the picture and put in the exact size up the top here. Now that works in Photoshop CS6, but if you're in Photoshop CS5 or before, there's a button that says Front Image. Just click on that and it does exactly the same thing. Yes, it is technically slightly easier to do this in Photoshop CS5 and before, but there we go, it works in exactly the same way. Once you're done, just come back and choose unconstrained or the clear button to get rid of those because next time your crop tool will still work the same way. Right, let's find the middle image. This is going to be the middle of my triptych. And then I'm going to go to layer and choose to duplicate the layer. Next, I'm going to go to image and canvas size. I'll change the units to percent and I'm going to increase the height to 330%. So that's room for three images plus a little gap in between. Now all I need to do is to go get the images themselves and select them and copy them and paste them. And because we went through all that trouble with the crop tool, when I paste it, it'll be exactly the right size. So yeah, it wasn't really much trouble, let's be honest. It was pretty simple to do. And of course, yes, I could have just done this by using free transform when I paste them in. But for accuracy, you can't beat that crop method. Right, last thing to do here then is to go up to image and canvas size, change the units to percent, and add a bit more of a border around the outside. So for the width, I'll use 130, and for the height, a little bit less, 120%. Right, okay, there we are. We have our, our triptych on screen, and I, I could stop there, but I'm going to make a background using these images. So on the layers here, I've got the top layer selected. I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to click the layer a couple little down, so all three of my images are selected. Basically, I'm just going to ignore the background layer. I'll drag those three selected layers and drop them on the new layer icon at the bottom, and that gives me copies of those layers. Now, on the copy layer, let's go find the first one. I'm going to click it so it's active, and use Edit and Free Transform to stretch this out, because these are going to become blurry versions of the originals that are much bigger. It really doesn't matter that they're not exactly the right proportions. OK, let's do the next layer down, again with Free Transform, and we'll stretch this out, stretch it down and up a little bit as well. And I don't have to be too accurate here, it is all going to go quite blurry. And finally, the one in the middle, a bit of Free Transform, stretching it out, stretching it up and down. OK, so that's really given me a background, but it is kind of looking a bit messy at the moment, so a little bit of tidying up to do. Let's click on the top layer that we did the free transform. I'll click on the bottom layer that I've done free transform. And I'll use layer merge layers. Then I can take the opacity for those down to about 50%. And I can use a bit of filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And let's put quite a bit of Gaussian blur in there, something about 40 pixels. So that gives me a nice kind of background for my triptych. All I need to do is to give it a slight three-dimensional feel by going up to the very top layer, going to Layer, and choosing Layer Style, Drop Shadow. Then all I need to do is increase the distance and the size, like that, and we can just move this across. In fact, I'm going to drag it because I want it over that side. There we go. And maybe just take the opacity down just so it's not quite as obvious. And then I need to repeat that on the other two layers, but nice little trick. 
Hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, drag the FX icon and drop it on the layer below. And that will copy the layer style from one layer to the next. OK, there's my triptych done. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.